Hi, I'm Teresa aboard Rasinante, our Norseman 447. A few years ago when I was filming One Simple Question, we ran into a 55 knot storm. So now we're even more focused on safety, so I invited Zach from Fiorentino Pair Anchor to teach me about pair anchors and drogues. Right, and we're, we're going to really focus on uh, parachute sea anchors, which are these great big bow deployed parachutes to help drastically slow our boat down and more importantly keep our bow uh, faced into the weather. This is a tactic where we all go down below and passively wait out the storm. <laughs> and then we're going to try out a couple different types of drug. One is a speed limiting drug, so it only slows our boat down a little bit where you'll still be at the wheel actively steering your vessel. And what's called a stopping drug, or otherwise known as a Jordan series drug, which really slows your boat down a whole lot. But like the parachute sea anchor, you go down below and passively wait out the storm. So I'm looking forward to trying out a couple different things. I think this is going to be a fun fun event for you. I'm looking forward to it too. How about we set some stuff up now before we leave yeah, the Yeah, it's a good idea to do it in port just, mm -hmm. just to kind of see where all the equipment is going to be attached. Good thing we're doing this because it doesn't take much to get lines to That's why we do everything it. in port. Well, we can bring it up on the dinghy. No, this is fine. Yeah, this is the easiest way to set up the rope for when you're deploying drag devices, with the flaking back and forth. I've tried the figure eight, but sometimes if you're doing stuff really quickly or the rope's moving really fast, it'll still whip up and create a knot. It won't be the end of the world, just I don't like to see knots when I deploy equipment. Knots do weaken road. Road also, uh, a, lot, a lot of people may not know, is when you have nylon rope and as soon as it hits the water, you lose 40% of the rope strength. Because it's wet? Because it's wet. The moment it starts absorbing some of that water, it loses 40% of the, of the strength. Most, most rat, uh, rope manufacturers will have that information. Uh, and if you get any kind of shock loading on this rope, you lose another 50% of your rope strength. Shock loading is when rope goes really slack for a long period of time and then tightens back up again. Or say I'm going to do long distance traveling and I'm, I'm, I'm likely to use a parachute sea anchor. I will normally go ahead and secure uh, the bag on deck. That's one thing you can do. Or at the very least get your anchor rope all set up and ready to go. So you can you can tie this stuff off anywhere you want. The spare line. So you can go ahead if you want and do a hold a knot. So you would Here. set this up before you go on passage? I do frequently if it's going to be long distance stuff. I'll have gotcha. my parachute anchor on deck. You have a lot of deck space here. Yep. So I would probably just have my anchor rope ready to go. I wouldn't bother. Actually I need to get this really close to the ouch. Stanchion post and then just tie it off. Simple knots on the stanchion, you know, I just do little simple knots like that. You can tie off stuff on the cleats if you want. If you have extra cleats or tow rails, we'll have all those nice little drainage on them. Yours doesn't have that. Mm, okay. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, just do it here. I'll show you. Just, yeah, do it real simple. Keep it simple. There you go. You can just do a couple of wraparounds and that's it. You know, the sort yeah, like that. Just do a couple of those and now it's secure. And the other line I just kind of fold and put behind the stanchion post. And now we're ready to go. If you have an anchor locker, you can store all your deployment road in the anchor locker. Now, Even if you don't practice using the equipment, it's a good idea to get familiar uh, with all the equipment that you have on board. Okay. So like what we're doing, we're, we're anchoring this out right now. We're in port. This is so easy to do. We don't have to worry about being bounced all over the place. Uh, if you think seas are going to get really rough out, maybe, you know, or a storm is coming your way, go ahead and go now bring this out on deck secure it and have it all ready to go. I'll get, in this case, now that we have this bag over here with the uh, military bag with the anchor rope, I'd also secure it on, on the opposite side here. I tend to deploy everything off the port side because I'm just used to doing it that way. It's how I was trained and I always deploy everything on the, on the port side. You, it doesn't matter what side. 
Okay. But we should yeah. do it the same way every time so that if I do it or if Ben does it and I've set it up and then he does it, he knows. Exactly. That's a good idea. And if you always mm -hmm. do it the same way every time, you don't think about it, you just mm -hmm. do it. As you two already know, communication is essential between the helms person and somebody walking up forward. And you've been in 55 knot winds. You can't Definitely. hear, everybody knows you can't hear anything. So we need to all agree upon, agree upon what hand signals we're going to use. And I know you use some ground mm -hmm. tactical, uh, ground tackle hand signals. Yes. What, 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 what's some of that? One of the ones that we use is our arm, my arm mimics the angle of the anchor chain. So if it's way forward, it'd be like that. If it's straight up and down, it'd be like that. Okay, so that, that's very similar to what we do when we're deploying parachute sea anchors or we want, say, let's say we need Jeff to go in reverse because everything's floating next to the boat. We, are, we have light winds today, so we're going to have to point to the stern and then Jeff will go ahead and start motoring in okay. reverse. Okay. And same, we had talked earlier, when you go to retrieve equipment, you point in the direction of where, where it we is. want him to motor because he can't see what's going on half the time, but we can. So mm -hmm. that's why we're in charge of the deployment and retrieval. So if we need Jeff to pick up the pace, what we're going to do is go maybe like this, kind of shake your hand, hurry up Jeff. And if it's just normal speed, take your time, do your own thing. Let's just keep our hands like that. And of course, okay. you know, as the float, when we come to, comes to the retrieval, we'll point to where the float is because that's the direction Jeff needs to go. And sometimes he'll see what's going on. He can figure it out. And when it comes to retrieval, once we get the chute really close to the boat and we have that trip line in our hand or you have the trip line in your hand, you're pulling mm -hmm. the chute on board. Typically, I'll tell them to kick it in reverse a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that means when we do this, that means to maintain station. That might mean stopping. Uh, if we had real high winds, that might mean motoring forward. But you're to maintain station. If I need you to go in reverse real fast, I'm doing this real fast because we got a chute going under the boat, okay? Or a drogue going under the boat. But I think that pretty much covers it all. Is there anything? Another one of? that's useful for us for an anchoring is we go like this when it's a board. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Because then you know we're. We're all done up there. Yeah, and, when, and when, when you do this, mm -hmm. now you know that means we've got everything on board. That still means you maintain station. Then I'm going to connect this. Yeah, connect the trip line to a boat fender. You can use any boat fender uh, on board your boat. I've been on a lot of different boats, and every fender used for docking has been the perfect retrieval float at the end of the trip line. This trip line is 50 feet in length, half inch in diameter, half inch in diameter only because I want to have something I can really grab a hold of if I'm in a colder climate. That'll make it a lot easier to, to hmm. handle that way. Mm, there we go. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so you have that's the trip ready. line connected. And then remember, we we're going to make sure the anchor road is going to be by the chalk area, wherever the rope is going to end up uh, becoming taut. So you can go ahead and connect that shackle to, to this. the swivel. Yes, on. There you go. Very good. Oh, actually, in this case, we have different pair rings. Sometimes, if they're a figure eight swivel, we would need the shackle. In this case, we're not going to need the shackle. So we can we're discard just connect that. it right to right, the line. We're just going to connect that, like so. Here you go. I'm going to. Yeah, put that over there. Perfect. Go ahead and finish tightening that up. Typically, it's a good idea to use like a plastic fastener on this to make sure the pin doesn't slip out. We're just going to do a simple, well, I guess we're going to use hand strength this time for that. All right. So that's looking uh, pretty good here. So we need to signal the helms person to turn more to win. So we'll and then we'll go ahead and, and what we want to do is if we're on the open ocean, we have big wind and waves approaching us. We want to kind of quarter the waves, right? You already know what happens when you go mm -hmm. straight into the waves. You get that giant uh, crashing motion. <laughs> so the job of the helms person is to maintain station. That means don't motor forward too fast or go in reverse too fast. Uh, if you Well, we're going to drop the trip line in the water first, as you already know. So once the trip line's in the water, we want to make sure that that boat is moving away from the trip line. Okay. okay. So whenever you're... Okay. You ready? Okay, go ahead and, and deploy the trip line. And then we're going to have them reverse? That's correct. Okay. So so right, right now we know it's light wind conditions. If you know we're not, when you're in heavy weather, the wind is going to move really fast. So I'm going to deploy this yellow line and the fender yeah, at the same time. This is the end of the trip line, so this should go in the water first. first. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and throw that in the water, and let's see 
Where are the fenders going? Look what's happening to the fender. Mm -hmm. We're moving, motoring forward, so we need to signal the person behind us to go in reverse, signal the helms person to go in reverse. Here's your trip line here. On to this. So you know, it's, it's, it's a rope with a floating rope with a fender at the end, so we don't have to worry about running it over. But this can happen in big, giant stormways. If you're falling into the trough, there's dead airspace there. The floats are sitting next to us. We need to now go in reverse, but we want to still keep the bow into the seas. Okay? So this is a good, he wants to maintain okay, this, ahead. right? Now we keep paying out the trip line, right? You can toss the whole thing overboard, or you can do it a little at a time like you are, right? See, we can still see we're going in work. Now reverse, it's the beautiful. sea anchor. Now you put your hand underneath the parachute canopy. The biggest thing is to maintain control of the stainless hardware. That's the biggest issue, okay? Go ahead and So pick. am I throwing this whole thing overboard you're at throwing, once? Yes, you are. The whole thing, just like it is. You're going to pull it out of the bag. It's 27 pounds. Yeah, just, yeah, don't worry about the triple. All we care about is the weight. Just there throw you. it. Just toss it over the lifeboat. Beautiful. Now we're watching the rope, right? We're watching our hands and feet. Yep. Sure nothing. Don't, yeah, there you go. It should take care of itself, all right? We flake the road back and forth, and the force of the chute should take over from there. I'll get back here. Cool. There we go. Everything's looking good. Here we go. It's going to stop us it, here in just a second. You should feel a sudden surge in any second. It's getting really taut. Yeah, see, now you're stopping. Feel that stop? You'll feel that in the storm. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> It's All like right. we're at anchor it, with an anchor anchor. Keep it low anchor. power reverse. Low power reverse. We don't have to go very fast, okay? Is that the anchor holding us? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's the anchor holding yeah. us. If by chance he goes the wrong direction, you just need to let the helms person know. So far, you're keeping up. He's going too fast, let the helm's person know. It's easy to do when you're recovering this in sloppy sea states. Easy to fall down into the trough and all of a sudden you're under the boat. Slow down. So he goes in reverse when that rope goes under the boat like this. It so is we don't a have to go under. for a swim, okay? So the helm's person's going in reverse now. I'm almost there. Yeah, when it becomes taut again, then you can signal him to move forward. But you want him to signal, show, no, show him what direction. What direction do you want the helm's person to go? Yeah, forward. be real clear. You're going for the white float. And then as you get really close, then you just cleat the road off as we get closer to the trip line. So now I would cleat off, maintain, sta yeah, perfect timing, maintain station. Okay, boat hook. Yeah, so I had him kick it in reverse just a little bit. I'm still watching where the parachute is. In fact, I'm going to have him kick in reverse just a hair more. I can see the parachute, so that's good. Kind of see the outlines of the chute, but I wouldn't Oops. want it to get any closer to the boat. So he's going in reverse. So this, I'm actually pulling up yes. the parachute right now. Now I'm, I'm having Jeff go into neutral. You see the chute? You can kind of see that big orange spot in the dirt, dirty water here. I want this away from the keel. Okay. Okay, I'm so keep bringing forward. in the trip line. You've got the anchor road anchored off. So now you want to go underneath the lifelines when you retrieve it, okay? Yep. So you want to come when down here the... with the trip line, okay? Pull it into here because now we can use this boat edge as leverage. And if for some reason, if this thing real, feels real heavy, you could walk backwards, use your body weight to help pull the chute on board. Perfect. Actually, you're doing very well for a first time recovery. Okay, now the canopy's on, on deck, so we grab, we keep pulling on the shroud lines until we reach the hardware. And we want to maintain control of that hardware when you bring it on board. And that will go on top of the parachute until we can get situated with everything else. Perfect. 
Just top, you can drop that on the parachute. And now what we want to do is get the rest, yeah, right, get the rest of the anchor rope situated. Perfect. And then, of course, what we would do then is loosen up the pin on the shackle or swivel, which I'm going to need a pair of pliers since my screwdriver doesn't fit mm -hmm. the hole of, of the swivel here. And then we would pack the parachute sea anchor. And everybody out there, when we have the parachute sea anchor on board, that doesn't mean the helms person takes off on us. The weather's going to be sloppy and it'll be very bumpy for us if we're trying to pack this up. So when we're finished packing and we put the parachute away and the rope, then we can signal the helms person to start moving forward because it's very difficult to pack the stuff when the boat's just slamming all yeah. over the place. And I think that's, that's good. You did well. We, cool. we, we maintained control of all the ropes when everything went under the boat. You signal the helms person to move away from, from the equipment. So this is the end of the, the series drogue. This is where we'd normally add any weight, uh, would add weight to help sink it faster. It performs better, just like a parachute would perform better if we added weight. But since we didn't add weight to the parachute anchor, we won't bother adding weight to this drogue. So they go ahead and shackle that in here. It's also really shallow here. Yeah, yeah we, we put too much weight in. Yeah, we might have that issue. We'll start dredging, huh? Now yeah, go ahead, go ahead and do your pin. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So you don't put both symbols through one shackle? Not normally. Normally I like them separated because it's extra, gives you extra strength, extra meat. Okay. You could. I guess if I use a much larger shackle, I could do that. I'm going to crank on these things, make it a little bit tighter. Just like the parachute anchor hardware, if I wanted to make this, make sure the pin never comes out, I can use a plastic tie. I normally just crank them, but that's personal preference. You'll never lose your equipment. There we go. Okay. Right, just, okay, we can see where the bridal setup is here, right? So now we're checking our lines again because, you know, it, it's easy to get stuff caught up on the horn, even on the drogue as we're deploying all the equipment underneath. Now, the reason I'm not deploying this one I'm over all the hardware because it's just too much line, too many, uh, too many cones. This one's a little undersized for this 47 foot, right? Yep. Your vessel. Normally, this would be 300 feet with three quarter inch road and a lot more cones attached to the line. This is 5 eighths inch by half inch line, good for boats up to about 10,000 pounds. So, it still gives us a pretty a good feel. A little light for this boat, but <laughs> we've got light wind. <laughs> not a problem. This is all about practice. That's why it's just so essential yeah. for all of us to go out there and really get a feel for this equipment because things, you know, things are going to happen. Let's have it happen during the fun time. Okay, so whenever you're ready, just go ahead and start painting the cones underneath here, okay? Just a little bit at a time. Eventually what you're gonna find is this thing's really gonna start to go, wow, this is really Feel taking it. a bite. Uh, it's, all right, so whenever you're ready. So we need to have Jeff gently motor forward. Yes, gently motor forward. Did you get the hint, Jeff? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then just go a little bit at a time. And once you start feeling it hold, pulling too much, then just let, let, the, let, it, let it come flying out the bag on its own. Okay. So I'm going to want to get this line over the monitor before it gets Turn to Turn starboard, please. Yes, correct. It's already... Do that. Yep, Perfect. straight behind us if you can. And the rope, and there I, can it goes. See it. I can see it towing away. I'm watching where my feet are, of course. I don't know when this thing's going to decide to whip out. Yeah. Okay, watch your. Now we got to start watching our hands. Okay. Yeah. Now in a storm, we would actually be traveling at seven knots, and that's a very fast speed. Yeah. During a lot of my just uh, normal testing, this thing would already be whipping out. But we're not going seven knots. We're going nice and slow today because it's practice. You can always up the speed later on and once this, you get through. And this was a floating can, line. No, this is nylon. Okay, get ready. Now we're getting close to the end. I immediately want to be able to dump this, okay? Well, fast right. speed, I've already dumped the bridle. No way am I going to hold on to that bridle, right? Oh, 
that's the spare rope. Now we're set on a V-shape. You can kick a, kick us uh, more forward there, Jeff. Add a little more power to this thing. Now this is what the manufacturer recommends bridle-wise. If for some reason one of the bridle legs start going slack, I'm going to pull in the slack a little bit because yep. I like to keep my bridles really nice Even. and taut. Mm -hmm. So when I do a speed limiting drug, for example, it'll probably be half the distance. Now if a full keel sailboat, it doesn't really matter. Those boats are so stable and they're going uh, through heavy weather. You can have longer bridles and get away with it. If you have a Benetil like I own, it wiggles all over the place. The fin keel boats are like much shorter bridles. I usually deploy three to ten feet, which is really ultra sh considered ultra short. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get any shock loading. But it's looking like the lines are pretty are even. nice and taut from what I can see. The starboard, or I'm sorry, the port side just loosened up a little bit. So those are things I look for. If it starts doing that too much, then I will shorten the line to make sure it stays nice. Because right now all the force is on one side of the boat. And if I'm going downwind right now, all the force is going to one side of the boat. Now the boat's going to start rounding up a little bit. Now, okay. this, the stopping drogue, the series drogue, is a passive tactic. So I now go down below to wait out the storm like I do with the parachute sea anchor. Okay. So what we're going to do for recovery is I always turn into the wind. So if the wind was actually blowing in this direction, we would turn in the wind on the lee side of the anchor rope. I'm sure you can guess why I want to be on the lee side of the anchor rope, because if we have wind and waves hitting the boat, we don't want to get the boat knocked over the over anchor rope and now it's mm -hmm. wrapped underneath, underneath the boat. I always pull it in, that's my personal preference, is to pull everything in hand over hand as the rope uh, becomes uh, slack. But if you're in sloppy sea states, if the wave hits, the, hits your boat and knocks it off course, which has happened to me many times, it now becomes tight. Now i got to quickly wrap it around a cleat. Mm -hmm. until the line loosens up again. Sometimes you have to go in a full circle and start motoring on the lee side of the line again to bring it back in. Or mm -hmm. when we get enough slack, we can go up to one of your primary winches and you can attach it to the winch and then just start cranking it by, via a winch handle. But just like we did on the parachute anchor, if you recall, we, you remove the pendant line first. Well, we're not, there's no block here to, to undo. So right. what we'll do is we'll create slack in one line first bring it over to, the, to one other side, now we have a single road to manage versus yep. two. Okay. So when you're in charge, so whenever you're ready to have... You know, well, I'm going to slacken this and then we can bring it in over here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ease up on this line. Right, because we're going to make the bridle become one road. That makes it a lot easier for retrieval when we have one single world versus two in the water. Very nice. that nice and taut so it equals the other rope. Oops! Don't lose the life sling. The life ring. Okay. Yep. So Go ahead and make that nice and taut. It doesn't fit in the chalk. Oh, you got it. There you go. That'll work. You just cleat that off briefly. There's not going to be a lot of force on that, but one never knows. Just do it. Yeah, just a real quickie. Perfect. That's fine. Now we have a single road. So we're going to turn to the lee side of this road, or what's the pretend lee side of the roads that we have out here. So right. that means you have to tell the helms person what to do. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, if you could steer this way, and, and I'll bring in the... do a little the... slower, too, because in real life we would have wind blowing on us, which would make the whole thing nice and slow for us. So why don't you make it nice and slow for us? Okay? And then you can go ahead and start bringing in the anchor road any way you like. The bridle would have to come in anyhow, even if we wanted to use a primary winch to bring in the, the stopping drogue, we would still have to bring in the bridle first before wrapping anything around any primary winch, unless you okay. want to do this by hand. Well, I think I might need to It's still got some tension on it, so you have the to winch. wait for slack, so keep, keep turning hard over. Your job is to run alongside the road at a V angle, because you're going to be on the lee side of the road.
That's great. This is a great course, Jeff. Excellent. Now you got a line in the water just so you Jeff, know. Jeff, this is a great course. I'd rather not turn anymore and drive over the drogue. So maintain your course, Jeff. This would be much easier with wind blowing because our boat would be blown backwards. So that, yeah. that's the big, big difference right here. Okay, so now I'm going to take it to the winch. Okay. Whoa. Okay, you can slow down, Jeff. Do a wrap around like you do normal sheets. Normal sheets. Yeah. Go to reverse it here. Sorry, what? Oh, I was, I was helping you with Jeff. Jeff loves to motor fast forward. You almost have it. There you go. Perfect. 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 Yep. I have a feeling currents today are also going to add a little excitement to retrieving the sobbing drug. Andrew, can you see it? Can you see which way it's paying out? We're not floating over it? No, don't go in reverse. Not yet. Let me see where we're at. Where we at. I would go gently and forward, if anything. I don't want to back over it. All right, just just stay, just keep it neutral. Will be the best at this point. Me. <laughs> gently, you can do gently. Because it's not too heavy for me right now. No, we don't want to go. We don't want reverse. No, not he's not in reverse. It's fine. See it. It's getting ready to break the water. Cones. The first cones are coming. <laughs> I need one of those racing winches. Now, should I keep going even though yep. this is at the winch? Correct. The manufacturer states that you can use the winch to bring in the droves. Although, it's starting to stack up on you there. I could take one turn off if it becomes yes. yeah, and we too much. Yeah, we start back into the cockpit area. Here, here we go. So technically. I think I probably could do it by hand, but oops. Oops. <laughs> I heard something snap. Okay, we want to try Let's see to how it goes through the winch. Yeah, it comes in. Well, you're gonna put an override, and if you if you do that, there has to maintain some tension on it. I was trying to get it so we can get it to jump into the cockpit. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, then pull this. That's one. what I was trying to. Oops! Yeah. Take a look at that. Yes, I know it's rapid. So I think the easiest way is gonna pull it in by hand. Yeah. This is going to be a pain. Or you'll need two people instead of one person. You just need to keep an eye on this to make sure these don't get caught on the horn there. Oh, it's, you'll yeah. know if it gets caught. It just got caught again. Okay. No, there's not. It's just that we're trying to bring everything into the cockpit. And these will catch frequently on mm -hmm. the winch. I already am familiar with that, but I just thought let's go with the practice. So. Tight. 
hard to tell sometimes. Once it really catches, you'll know. Yeah, you'll hear it rip. <laughs> yeah. There, that one caught. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Ben, how's it look on the stern there? Are we okay? We're fine. You know what we could do is you could just tail it. Yes. And we won't use the self-tailing. That's right. probably better if you have two people. Oh, yeah. It's a lot better. Ta-da. I want everybody to get a real feel for this. Oh. And you were not driving over it? Okay. These are these are eyes on the stern. Yes. Wow, it's long. This one's roughly. Let me think for a second. Fifty plus. Feet longer would be required for this boat. Plus, we would need to have three-quarter inch rope. Benji, can you unfollow that? Nope. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Oops. I was paying attention. I was looking at Ben. I bet I can pull this in by hand. Oh yeah, without question. I'm going to go for it. Since it's, it's relatively calm, we can do it that way. Take it out of the chalk if you like too. Yeah. Now if we had the wind, the wind would have kept us back. We would have had this running alongside the, the drogue. It would have been a lot easier to bring on board that way. smaller series drove the inventor recommended 25 pounds at the end of this and for the boat's gear size you're looking at the preferable weight of 50 pounds. So okay. Some of the manufacturers or suppliers recommend less weights now. I'll give you an idea that that would add a little effort to it. There we go. So whenever you're ready, you can just go ahead and, and shackle the ropes to the drogue itself and it's ready to go. Okay. And just like the parachute anchors, we would have plastic ties. Yeah, just hand tighten it. That's not going to come loose. And we want to open. Can I unclip these? Yeah, you want to open up the shark drogue. And any other speed limiting drogue, we would take them out of their bags, of course. Yeah, you're doing it correctly. Yeah, it's a, it's and everything's packed supposed... inside. Yeah, that's supposed to be there. Yeah, go ahead, open the lid here. You open the lid, and then go ahead and pull everything out. The rope, everything. So comes I start out. deploying it like this. No. Take the rope out, and then grab that. See that grommet? Yeah. Grab the grommet and pull. That pulls the red canopy out of there. See? Gotcha. Now you're done. And so when it goes to retrieve, I mean, sorry, deploy, you just grab this whole thing and throw it overboard. This is being used as a speed limiting drug right now. So whenever you're ready, you just let everybody know you're going to deploy it. And you're looking, of course, you're checking your feet and hands and everything else, making sure there's no rope wrapped around any limbs, all, all stuff we all know about. I'm going to deploy this. So we're 
We're going forward a little, correct? Yes. All right. You just drop it. You just, there you go. There it goes. And then we're just going to, you can probably just let it do its own thing. Now, if we had this in a bag, probably less likely to catch on a horn, but that's what I'm watching right now, what if the rope catches on the horn. All things to think about when we're doing this practice. I forgot to mention that we want to get the bridle out real oh. fast. <laughs> Whoops. There it is. <laughs> And that's it. And I keep the bridle really short because it just keeps everything nice and taut. If we have them out there too far, like 50 or 80 feet is commonly recommended by manufacturers of speed limiting drogues. I notice that one of the lines tend to go short. And when that happens, all the force goes to one side of the, uh, of the boat mm -hmm. and your boat tends to want to turn in that I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can always compensate by turning a little bit more into the weather with a side that became slack. But I like to keep things really short and taut. So we have roughly 14 feet, maybe, deployed from the transom. That's what I like with, with most of my, my sailboats when I'm deploying the steering dog. So we, we're just slowing down a little bit. I don't know if you noticed the difference. Yeah. We were kind of, what, idling a little bit earlier. Are we going the same speed that we were before, Jeff? Once you've deployed, I, yeah. You're the same speed as the stopping dog. So before, we're pretty much oh, not oh, moving. Uh, well, you don't know. <laughs> You're in charge of the helm. I feel like we slowed down a little bit. We're only slowing. We're only slowing down a little bit now. We're still moving at an okay pace. With the stopping drogue out there, we're really not moving. Right, because that really anchors to the water. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. And so on retrieval, we must just go into retrieval. Yeah. Uh, for retrieval, we're going to do the same thing we did with with the stopping drogue. Exact same mm -hmm. setup. Okay. okay. So I'm going to ease up on that one. Pass yeah. the line over to here and bring it in here. Or whatever size you want. It's really up to you. Well, since we have that winch already then that's to use, what we'll just do. in case, then and that's what we do. I'll bring it in on that side. Okay. And then we'll turn and pretend that you know we're on the lee side of the rope. We'll turn up a little bit. After I after I get the line onto this side, then we'll turn up and go that way. Turn turn to port a little bit right now, just so we can slack in the other line up. So our helms person is going to turn just a little bit to help create slack in the bridle as Teresa undoes it, undoes the line. Yeah, 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 go ahead and go straight. When the shark drove comes up. Yes. But helm first. Yeah, I know. Now it doesn't matter so much as when the drogue actually pops up. Because you have to turn it off and then turn it back on. I just, some kind of reset thing. So you're doing exactly the same thing you would with any drag device. We're always turning our bridle into a single road. Then we have a single road to handle. If we forget accidentally, we can run over the other leg. So we're gonna have him turn into the weather, remember? We're turning yep. into the weather to create slack. Okay, can you turn up this way a little bit so we can have some slack? Go to starboard. Don't worry about this until. Oops. Until we see the shark. You know, that's more interesting when you actually see the drogue. Yeah. And do this slowly. Ugh. So, like before, if, it's, if you're feeling any force at all, then you've got to wait for the boat to do the work for us. It's not that heavy right now. Okay, good. It should be. Okay. So you can choose to bring it in hand over hand if you want, or you take it to the primary winch. It's personal preference. Right now it's pretty easy to bring in hand right. over hand. And any, any speed limiting drug for the most part would feel the same way. Some will have different drag versus others. We're not running over it. Okay, straighten it out now for a moment. 
until we see where the rope is or where the drogue is. Okay, now I'm going to need to. Okay, start go turning to the winch. more. Turn to starboard. I'm going to take it to the winch now. Okay. Now this one you can crank in all the way because it's just going to be road. And if by chance I had added some weight to it, it's going to be a mushroom maker at the back of the drogue to help sink it a little bit for storm use. So okay. the weight's behind it so you can go all the way up till you see the drogue. Yeah, the extra uh, 10 foot line that tows behind the drogue is for that, that purpose to add a mushroom maker. Any dinghy anchor will work. I mean in a pinch, don't worry about it if you don't have 10 pounds. It's designed to hold 50 pound anchor. so. Why we use beefy hardware on that equipment. You can turn more to starboard. So what we're trying to do is keep that road nice and slack. Okay. Makes it easier to bring on board that way. Yeah, see it's, it's loosening up a little. Yeah. Yep. See that? Yep. So we're gonna run alongside the road, okay? That'll make it easier. Okay. And we'd be doing this on the lee side if we had wind and wave uh, hitting the uh, stern quarter. We stay on the lee side as we're motoring up forward. Now, if I don't want to motor, I would just keep going in one direction or stay in neutral, and the wind will push the boat. And sometimes that takes a little longer to bring a drogue on board when, you're, when the wind's pushing the boat away from the drogue because it kind of creates a bit of a drag when you bring it in that way. Any tension on a drogue or parachute anchor is going to create drag when you're retrieving it. Which is why I like to use the boat's motor to help be the muscle for the, for the workout. Try to keep it as simple as possible. I think we're getting closer. It feels like we're getting closer. A little more to starboard, please. It's hard, it's hard to starboard right now. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, you're traveling slow, and that's a smart thing to do. It's always better to take your time. Well, I'm seeing some interesting action in the water was telling me where either dredging or currents are coming in. You know, that's a little excitement for things. This is, this is your third drag device and fourth deployment today, so you're going to get a nice workout. That's right. <laughs> Well, in heavy weather, you're only deploying one item, whether it's a parachute anchor or a drogue. If you have both devices, here comes the drogue. It's nice and red. I can see it. Now there you, it is. You can keep pulling this up. You can keep going. And as it gets closer to the boat, you can go ahead and put it neutral now, Jeff. You can go ahead and put it neutral. Okay. There it is. You can keep bringing it on board. It's not going to scratch. Like most drugs require chain to sink them. There's no chain Looks on the front like of this. Okay, so we don't have to worry about scraping anything. Now you bring it as close as you're comfortable to the boat. If that thing was banging the hole, then I just grabbed the boat hook at this point to boat hook the canopy hole. See the hole? There's big slots on that. Yeah. Sucker. Oh, that's as far as we're taking it. That's it. Cool. So now you can uh, bring it in by hand. Yeah. Now, for some reason, you couldn't pull it up the hole like that. You can use a boat hook to grab the slot. That would, that would apply to other speed limiting drugs that may have chain in front of them. You would need to get a boat hook at that point to pull all that on board. Okay. And if that had a 10 pound anchor on it, we would be pulling that up and away from the hole because right. we don't want to bang the hole. If you use a nylon covered anchor, no problem. You have a nylon covered anchor that won't that won't scratch the hole. I'm always okay. trying to think of these things when I'm designing equipment. Great. And if I was going to make use this as an emergency steering device, I wouldn't have added, you know, 250 to 300 feet of road. With that, it would be just the bridle. Mm -hmm. So that way, I can pull it to starboard. The boat turns to starboard, pulls to port, pulls to port. So you can okay. interchangeably use bridles, anchor ropes. If you have carry two different drag devices, you can use the rope for the exact same equipment. 
so that saves space. We used a belt fender earlier uh, on the trip line for mm -hmm. the parachute. Why buy an extra fender when you already have one on board your boat? Exactly. Then you have to store an extra one too. That's right, <laughs> exactly. Cool. Right. Thanks for showing it to me. Oh, you're welcome. It was fun. <laughs> Good. How's your muscles feel? Won't know till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>